Oftentimes in the NFL, we see a family that is so absurdly talented that they yield multiple offspring that are able to make it in the NFL. Now, bear in mind, there is no way I can make a video on every single sibling rivalry in the NFL. So in this video, I'm going to cover five of them. And if you guys want more of this, if we break 5,000 likes, I will be bringing you guys a part two. To this video so before we get started if you're new to my channel it's a brand new nfl channel i'm trying to bring you guys videos at least four times a week so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications to get fresh football content that pertains to the xfl nfl and ncaa straight to your device so let's start out with a very underrated sibling duo and that's the Celics. now if you're a hardcore philadelphia eagles fan then you have to love Brent Selleck, a player who had the opportunity to play with Donovan McNabb, Carson Wentz, and Nick Foles. Brent Selleck was a fifth round pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, and he carved out a role for himself with the Philadelphia Eagles, which isn't typically the norm for a NFL Draft pick that was selected in the fifth round. Throughout his career, he had about 398 receptions, 4,998 receiving yards, and averaged 12.6 yards per reception to go along with 31 receiving touchdowns, and Brent retired at the top when the Philadelphia Eagles won Super Bowl 52 and was just recently hired as a personnel consultant for the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, his brother Garrett Selleck went undrafted in the 2012 NFL Draft but made the San Francisco 49ers 53-man roster in 2012. Like his brother Brent, Garrett was a part of two major eras in San Francisco, one being the end of the Colin Kaepernick, Jim Harbaugh era and the other being the revitalized Kyle Shanahan offense that the depends on a complex zone running scheme, play actions, and an aggressive defensive attack. Selleck had an opportunity at a Super Bowl championship this past year, but the 49ers were ultimately defeated 31-20 by Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. This past offseason, Garrett Selleck announced his retirement via Instagram. Up next, we have the Martins. Both of the Martins attended Notre Dame University for their college years. Both of them are linemen. Nick Martin was drafted in the second round by the Houston Texans and is currently their starting center today. And as good as Nick Martin is, he is nowhere nearly as decorated as his brother, Zach Martin. And Zach Martin has to by far be my favorite draft pick in Dallas Cowboys history because at the time he was about to be picked, the Dallas Cowboys were rumored to be really in favor of Johnny Manziel. Thankfully, they went with Zach Martin, who turned out to be a four-time first-team all-pro guard and a six-time pro bowler. Zach Martin also helped establish the identity of the Dallas Cowboys by anchoring their offensive line alongside Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, and Lael Collins. When this unit is fully healthy, combined with Ezekiel Elliott, they are absolutely unstoppable. Up next, we have the Carr family. And if you don't know about the Carr family, let's start with the older Carr, which is David Carr. Coming out of Fresno State, David Carr was lauded for his ability to throw an incredible deep ball. He was the perfect prospect practically because he had a perfect deep ball, accuracy, and tons of arm strength. He also ran a pro style offense in Fresno State, which means he had the brain to learn complex plays and complex schemes and had a phenomenal memory, which is what you need to be considered as a remarkable quarterback prospect. At the time, the team that had the number one overall pick in the 2002 NFL draft, which was David Carr's draft was the expansion team Houston Texans, and they couldn't pass up on a talent like David Carr at the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. But there was one major knock on David Carr's game, one fallacy to his perfect package, one Achilles heel, and that was the fact that David Carr wasn't the best at improvising out of the pocket and he wasn't the greatest scrambler. But back in 2002, that was okay. We're talking about an era that featured Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, and the only player that was really electrifying us with his feet was Michael Vick, but he was only in the league for about a year. Scrambling quarterbacks weren't really the norm back then. But for David Carr to be successful, all he needed was a great offensive line. Now, the problem with that is when you are an expansion franchise, you have arguably the worst player at every position, save for the draft picks that you hit on in your first NFL draft. So David Carr had an awful offensive line and had no scrambling ability. And what was the result of that? Well, in his rookie year, he got sacked a record 76 times. The Texans would eventually elect to move on from David Carr after the 2006 season, but not until he was sacked 68 more times that season. David Carr is known for the amount of times he was sacked throughout his career, and he's considered to be one of the greatest draft busts of all time. From 
2007 to 2012, he was a career backup for the Panthers, Giants, 49ers, and then the Giants again before retiring to be an analyst. But all in all, I'm a huge believer that the Houston Texans ruined David Carr's career. In my opinion, if you're an expansion franchise and there's a culture changing quarterback at the top of the draft, your best bet would be to trade down. That way you could build around your new team quicker and not ruin a promising player's career. Another good example of this is take a look at how Andrew Luck's career panned out. The Colts drafted a game changing quarterback with the number one overall pick in 2012 and failed to put an offensive line around him. The result, he literally retired seven years later as a result of getting hit way too much. But if you look at the way Kansas City did things, the very first pick in the Andy Reid era was a left tackle by the name of Eric Fisher. They didn't draft Patrick Mahomes until all of those pieces were in place and they didn't do it until they were absolutely sure that he'd be safe behind that pocket. Meanwhile, David Carr's brother, who was actually seen in a few of David's interviews during his pre-draft prospect as this little kid, Derek Carr, currently plays for the Oakland Raiders. Derek showed incredible promise during the first three years of his career, as in 2014 he threw 21 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, then followed that season up with a 3,987 yard passing year with 32 touchdowns and 13 interceptions for a quarterback rating of 91.1. In 2015, he followed that up with a 3,937 yard passing season in 2016 for a QBR of 96.7. He then took a slight step back in 2017, but he still threw more touchdowns than interceptions and threw for 3,500 yards. Then John Bruton would be brought in and Derek Carr would actually see an increase in completion percentage from 62% in 2017 to 69% in 2018 and 70% in 2019. And he just threw for his most passing yards ever this past year at 4,054. But despite a 100.8 quarterback rating in 2019, the Oakland Raiders are rumored to potentially be trying to move on from Derek Carr. The Raiders have been involved in several rumors surrounding Tom Brady, Phillip Rivers, and even a few players in this year's NFL draft. This could be because as great as Derek Carr is on paper, his teams haven't made it to the playoffs in three years. He's considered to be fairly inconsistent as well, although the numbers say otherwise. Despite this, Derek Carr holds multiple franchise records for the Oakland Raiders, including pass completions, pass attempts, pass completion percentage, passing yardage, lowest interception percentage, and most game-winning drives. And then up next, we have the Watt family, one of the most football families that we've ever seen in the NFL since the Mannings, possibly. And in the Watt family, let's start out with JJ, who is the oldest Watt. JJ Watt played for the Houston Texans since the 2011 NFL season after being selected 11th overall in the 2011 NFL draft. When JJ is healthy, he is one of the most dominant edge rushers in the league and has five Pro Bowls with five first team all pros to back it up with three Defensive Player of the Year awards. The only knock on JJ is that he has always had a tough time staying healthy, but when he is healthy, he is a terror to face against. At this point of his career, JJ currently has 479 total tackles, 96 sacks, 23 forced fumbles, 15 fumble recoveries, and two defensive touchdowns. Meanwhile, his brother, Derek Watt, plays a position that is considered to be extinct in the NFL. He was a sixth round pick in the 2016 NFL Draft by the San Diego Chargers and currently has one touchdown, 152 receiving yards, 10 receptions, and 45 rushing yards off of 17 attempts for his career. He is considered to be a minimal role player, but has a role in the NFL regardless, which is more than most people can say. Meanwhile, TJ Watt is an outside linebacker who was drafted at the end of the first round of the 2017 NFL Draft. He already has two Pro Bowls and a first team All Pro and a second team All Pro to his name. He currently plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers and at this point of his career has 177 total tackles, 34.5 sacks, and 15 forced fumbles to go along with four fumble recoveries and three interceptions. Now, this next family could be by far my favorite story as Devin and Jason McCourty are twin brothers, with Devin McCourty being the more hyped up prospect coming out of the 2010 NFL Draft, being named a first round pick of the New England Patriots in 2010. Devin would win three Super Bowls and be named to two Pro Bowls as a staple of the New England Patriots as a free safety. And at this point of his career, Devin has 772 tackles, 11 forced fumbles, 26 interceptions, and two touchdowns for his career. Jason, however, didn't come out of the NCAA with as much hype as his twin brother. He was drafted by the 
Tennessee Titans in the sixth round, but put together an average career as a cornerback. He has 680 tackles, one defensive touchdown, 18 interceptions, and nine forced fumbles. And in 2018, these two twins teamed up together on the New England Patriots. The result, a Super Bowl ring. And of course, no sibling video would be complete without the Mannings. So let's start with Peyton Manning, the number one overall pick in the 1998 NFL Draft. And what you're hoping you're drafting every time you select a player at the top of the draft. The son of NFL legend Archie Manning had a phenomenal 13-year record-breaking career for the Indianapolis Colts, which saw him win a Super Bowl in 2006. In 2011, Peyton Manning would undergo injury issues, and as a result of that, the Indianapolis Colts would have this unique opportunity to draft his heir apparent and another transcendent talent in Andrew Luck. This saw Peyton Manning move on to the Denver Broncos, where he would be a part of one of the greatest offenses in NFL history. Peyton Manning has a plethora of awards, including two-time Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP, 14-time Pro Bowler, seven-time first team all pro third time second team all pro five time nfl mvp two time nfl offensive player of the year nfl comeback player of the year and having his jersey retired for both the indianapolis colts and the denver broncos he also holds the nfl record for most passing touchdowns in a season which is at 55 most passing yards in a season which is at 5477 and most touchdown passes in a game which is seven at the time of his retirement peyton manning threw 6100 25 completions for 65 percent completion percentage had a touchdown to interception ratio of 539 touchdowns to 251 interceptions threw for 71,940 yards and had a passer rating of 96.5 he is a college football hall of famer without a doubt he's going to be a first ballot hall of famer his brother eli manning was also a number one overall pick in the 2004 nfl draft by the san diego chargers which was traded to the new york giants we have a whole video on that. It's the first video on this channel. If you guys want to check it out, what would have happened if Eli Manning stayed with the Chargers? You'd be surprised. But Eli Manning had a fairly nice career, but it did not come close to the career that Peyton Manning had. He himself also won two Super Bowl championships and won two Super Bowl MVPs in a fantastic and phenomenal fashion, but he wasn't nearly as dominant as his brother Peyton was. Eli threw 4,895 completions for a 60% completion percentage, threw for 57,000 passing yards, had a touchdown to interception ratio of 366 to 244 and a passer rating of 84.1. One of the biggest debates about Eli Manning is whether he is truly worthy of being a Hall of Famer. And I'm gonna let you guys decide that in the comment section down below as both of the Mannings are now officially retired as Eli Manning officially retired this past off season. Is there any siblings that I left out that you would like to see in part two? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm your boy Microphone and I'll catch you guys in the next upload.